What's up guys, in this video I want to show you how to solve a simultaneous equation of a linear equation as well as a circle. Okay, so I know I'm dealing with a linear equation here because you can see here that both the x and the y are separated by subtraction and the power is equal to one. Whereas here, I have my x squared and my y squared are separated by addition, but the power is going to equal to two. So it's important to kind of, before we even get started, just to understand what I'm looking for, right? If I have a line and it possibly is going to intersect a circle, it could go and do that at no points. It could do that at one point, which we call the tangent, or it could intersect at two points. And the reason why I want to just be able to give you that visual is, is just to kind of understand like it's okay if we're going to find two solutions, right? It's okay if we're going to be looking for one or for none. Those are all possible scenarios when we're trying to be solving the system of equations. Now, a lot of times when we're dealing with a simultaneous equation of two linear equations, a lot of times you want to decide should we use elimination or should we use substitution? But that all comes into when you can eliminate a variable with like terms. And if you were to look at this, even though they're not ordered in the same way, like I'd have to add the 10 to the other side, if I add or subtract these two equations, I'm not going to eliminate my x or y at all. And the reason being is because, uh, the reason being is because they're not like terms, right? So I need to get these on kind of the same page if I was going to use elimination. Or I could use substitution. Now the reason why I'd want to use substitution is because then what I could do, I could solve for a variable and then plug in the expression the variable is equal to into the other equation. Now when we're trying to identify for substitution or what variable to solve for, typically what we want to do is find the variable that is either solved set equal to 1 or negative 1. And you can see in this case my y has a negative 1 in front of it. So therefore in this top equation, which I'm going to call equation number 1, I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. Okay, so now you can see what I did is I just added the y to the other side, right? So now I have 3x minus 10 is equal to y. Now that's very important because now I have this set as an expression. And what's important about this expression is now I can plug this expression in for that value of y. Now again, remember, it's being squared. That's why I use those parentheses because it's very important that when we are squaring something that we're going to be multiplying the 3x minus 10 times the 3x minus 10. So now what I've done is I've taken equation one and I'm going to rewrite it, right? So I rewrote it where it's solved for a variable. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into equation number two, which is now going to provide me with equation number three. Okay, so now you can see that taking equation one, rewriting as solve for a variable, plugging it into equation two gives me now equation three. And notice what my variables are here, guys. Now I only have x's. That's good, that's what I want. Right? Um, I also recognize it's going to be a quadratic. So immediately when I see a quadratic, I'm thinking, all right, I'm eventually going to have to use quadratic formula, completing the square or factoring. And again, also what's the cool thing about a quadratic? What do we know about the possible solutions of a quadratic? Or it could be none, one, or two. So okay, we're on the same line here. So let's go ahead and multiply this out here. So I'll get x squared plus Okay, so now this might look like pretty big numbers, right? But again, well, here's the cool thing, guys, right? Now what happens here if I subtract the 100 on both sides and then I can combine these two together, then I'm actually going to get a pretty simplistic um, equation. So now what I can do is I can divide everything by 10 to even simplify this further. And now I can just go ahead and factor out the 6 to create a product that I can now use the zero product property to go ahead and simplify. Okay, so now what we've identified is the value of x's where the graph are going to intersect. You can see that we actually have two solutions here, right? But again, now we need to be able to solve for y. And again, the reason why using substitution is so helpful in this case is because if I know when x is equal to 0, I can go ahead and solve for y by plugging in the value of x into this equation over here. So therefore, if I plug 0 in for x, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 10 is going to be negative 10. So I could say uh, x equals a 0. Um, I can have a y is going to equal to a negative 10. And then the other point here is when I have x equals 6. And again, you could just do the math in your head. You can just do the math in your head. 3 times 6 is going to be an 18 minus 10 is going to be an 8. So in this example, I have a 6 comma an 8. Now this equation was nice because both my x's and my y's were squared. But what about instead of squaring, I took the square roots of the x and the y? What would that system of equations look like in that example? What would the system of equations look like that? In the next video, that's exactly what we're going to explore.